But at the same time, there are still arguments playing out over just how impactful drones have actually been. Recently, for example, there was an article in The Conversation by Paul Lushenko, an assistant professor and director of special operations at the US Army War College. And he essentially argues, among other things, that while drones have delivered some tactical and operational success for both Ukraine and Russia, they've been strategically ineffective. To quote directly from the article, Drones have not, and are not likely to, shape the outcome of the war in Ukraine. They have not allowed Ukraine to break its stalemate with Russia, nor have they encouraged Russia to end its occupation of Ukraine. He also says, quote, The lesson from Ukraine is that while drones have some value at the tactical and operational levels of war, they are strategically inconsequential. They are not a magic bullet, offering a game-changing capability to decide the fate of nations. Instead, countries must rely on time-tested combined arms manoeuvre, wherein they integrate personnel and weapon systems at a particular time and place to achieve a particular goal against an adversaries. End quote. One wonders if that means that almost no weapon system can be considered strategically consequential, because they have to be used together in combined arms for maximum effect, and even an extreme case like a nuclear warhead realistically requires a delivery system. It also, I think, arguably underexplores the potential impact of drones both on how combined arms operations are conducted and also how viable they are. The article acknowledges, for example, the role of Ukrainian drone operators in stopping the Russian advance on Kyiv, saying that Ukrainian air reconnaissance units, quote, use drones to interdict and block a massive Russian convoy traveling from Chernobyl to Kyiv a month after Russia's February 24, 2022 invasion of Ukraine. It did so by destroying slow-moving vehicles that stretched nearly 50 miles, causing Russia to abandon its advance, end quote. I don't think drones deserve sole credit for that, but let's go with it for a moment. I think you could argue that halting Russian columns moving towards Kyiv were exactly the kind of tactical actions that could be aggregated together to have operational and strategic significance. Enough Russian tactical successes that enabled an operation to take Kyiv successfully may potentially have ended up having all sorts of strategic significance. Taking a capital is no small thing, and it's difficult to assess what the full ramifications that would have been for the stability of the Ukrainian government, foreign support, or a range of other macro factors. As I said, I'll link the article in the description, and it's probably not the only one of its kind. But for what it's worth, from my perspective, when you have an argument that a weapon system isn't strategically decisive because the conflict it's being used in is a balanced one without a decisive result, I think that's falling into the trap of looking at the outcome of a conflict as opposed to the impact of a system. Which, among other things, ignores the fact that a stalemate might in fact be a strategically significant result. If one side would have lost a conflict, but then because it deploys a new system is able to score a draw, I'd argue that's still a pretty significant impact. And if both sides deploy a new technology, keeping them in a sort of balance, I don't think that takes away from the impact and value that, that system has. This is one reason why I'd tentatively suggest, if you're trying to determine just how impactful a new system or technology is, the best test might not be to look at how the conflicts that system was used in played out, but instead what would have happened if the decision to invest in that technology or system wasn't made by one or both sides. For example, if you take a passage from the article and swap around a few words, you could end up with something that could have been written in 1916. Despite these tactical effects and limited operational gains, artillery is strategically ineffective. Artillery has not and is not likely to shape the outcome of the war in Europe. They have not allowed the Entente to break its stalemate with Germany, nor has it encouraged Germany to end its occupation of Belgium. To the extent artillery batteries have been strategically consequential, the implications have been psychological. And you could make that argument at the time because the Western Front, despite enormous quantities of artillery being used, was a stalemate which would have ignored the fact that artillery was part of the stalemate, and that if either the Entente or Central Powers had entirely failed to invest in their artillery, then I'd argue the war probably would have swung massively and potentially strategically decisively against them. So I'd suggest we then look at drone deployment through that same sort of but-for lens. What would happen if the investments in drone systems hadn't been made? If not for the investments in drones, the battlefield in Ukraine would be so much less transparent. It would presumably be easier to move and concentrate forces and supplies. Spotting targets for indirect fires would be more difficult, as would be correcting those fires. And in a situation like that, where it might be safer to concentrate forces and defending fires might be less responsive, especially against dynamic targets, it might be that the balance between attacker and defender in that scenario would look a little bit different from the war in Ukraine that we see today. But for the range and accessible precision that drones and loitering munitions provide, a lot more of the Ukrainian battle space would be under considerably less threat. There would be a lot of things out there, destroyed by systems like Lancet or spotted by drones and then engaged by longer range fire options, that might have survived. 
Artillery tactics probably wouldn't have to be optimized against a threat that didn't exist, and the forces might have been able to skip certain tactical and operational adaptations that do come with a cost. In that sense, you might see parallels to the arguments around whether or not HIMARS was actually effective. You could argue HIMARS and its Gimlas missiles weren't particularly decisive because Russian forces were able to disperse their ammunition storages or pull back their depots. But reframe that, and you could argue that Gimlas was impactful because it forced Russia to disperse its storages and pull back its depots. The costs imposed on an enemy can be holistic, they don't have to take the form of a burning piece of equipment. 